now we will see about the lab diagnosis of the enteric fever this is the second part of the enteric fever where we will see solely about the lab diagnosis of the enteric fever so in lab diagnosis we have seen the what are the samples we collect in different weeks of infection <coughs> so if we are suspecting in the first week then we will be collecting the blood for blood culture now the site from where the blood is to be collected is disinfected first with 70 percent isopropyl alcohol and then by chlorhexidine then 8 to 10 ml of blood is collected in either conventional blood culture bottles which are the brain heart infusion medium monophasic or either biphasic or fit uh, yafir in the automated blood culture bottles like bacti and alert so we can collect it either in the conventional blood culture bottles or in the automated blood culture bottles which are directly uh, i mean like the bacti and alert which are directly put into the automated machines and they give directly the results okay uh, and then the blood culture bottles are incubated at 37 degrees centigrade and the growth occurs within 24 hours because salmonella is non-fastidious <coughs> and blood cultures are made on blood agar and macaque agar then after the growth has occurred in the blood culture bottles we collect colonies and then we again culture them onto the blood agar and the macaque agar now on the blood agar what is the uh, colony that we see on blood agar is the non-hemolytic moist colonies and in maconkey agar we see non-lactose fermenting colonies so these two are the uh, uh, giving us a clue about the salmonella bacteria in the second week we collect blood for serology and in serology we detect the serum antibodies and the test that is uh, widely done for detecting the serum antibody is the vital test okay so in vital test uh, that is a type of agglutination test where HNO antibodies against the S typhi asparatyphi A and B are detected in the patient's sera by using HNO antigen so we have got the HNO antigen previously in our hand and we will just detect the antibody against those HNO antibodies in the blood of the or in the serum of the patient. So see here, uh, what are the antigens that we use? That is O antigen of S typhi that is indicated by T O, H antigen of S typhi that is T H, H antigen of S paratyphi A that is A H, and H antigen of S paratyphi B that is bh now after that what is the result that we get we have seen what type of clumps we see so if o agglutination appears if o agglutination occurs then there will be granular chalky clumps but if there is s agglutination there will be large loose fluffy clumps okay so based on the clumps we can detect what type of uh, agglutination has occurred and what uh, which antibodies are present in the either H present HR H antibodies are present or O antibodies are present we can detect that by the type of clumps <coughs> then how will we interpret so for interpreting we can see this table where if TO antibodies are seen and as uh, and TO uh, I mean if TO antibodies are seen and TH antibodies are seen then the causative organism is S typhi. But if TO antibodies are seen and AH antibodies are seen, then the causative agent is S paratyphi A. And if TO antibodies are seen and BH antibodies are seen, then the causative agent is S paratyphi B. So in this way, we can interpret the what type of um, serotype is the infecting agent. Then we do the stool culture. Okay, so stool culture is done uh, if the sample, if the, in, uh, if, if the patient is in the third or the fourth week of the infection. So fecal specimen is inoculated simultaneously into the enrichment broth and selective media. So enrichment broth which we use is selenite abroth, tetrathymate broth and the gram-negative broth. 
and the selective media that we use are the Maconchi agar where we see non lactose fermenting colonies if colonies are produced by the salmonella typhi then we see deoxalate citrate agar where we see the non lactose fermenting colonies again and then we have the xylose lysine de deoxycholate xld agar if we use xld agar then again we see the red colonies with black center and if we have the wilson blair medium then we see salmonella typhi where we see the black colored colonies and uh, in case of so i mean if wilson blair medium is there and if we are uh, inoculating s typhi then we will be seeing the black colored colonies and if we are inoculating s paratypha a or b then we will be seeing the green colored colonies so based on the type or the color of the colonies we can get a clue about uh, what is the organism causing the infection then we have the culture smear and the motility testing so in culture smear and motility testing we make a gram stained smear made from the colonies uh, and that gram staining shows the that gram staining shows gram negative bacteria because salmonella is a gram negative bacteria it is non capsulated non sporing and it is motile with peritrigus flagella for motility we can do the hanging drop method so these are the features that we get by the gram staining and the motility testing and we get a clue that it is salmonella typhi <coughs> but still it's a question how will we identify so identification can be done in the colonies by automated identification system such as malditoff and the vitec <coughs> other than that we can do the conventional biochemical tests like the catalase positive and oxidase it is catalase positive and oxidase negative then we have antigen detection in this tool we can do it by elisa then we have treatment so treatment uh, is done by the ceftriaxon either thriomycin and the ciprofloxacin and carriers are treated with amoxicillin and probenicillin this is not so much necessary from microbiology point of view but you can remember it for pharmacology now how will we prevent this salmonella so for prevention we have vaccine we have parental vaccine we have oral vaccine parental vaccine is vi antigen capsular polysaccharide vaccine and the killed whole cell vaccine which is called as a tab vaccine and oral vaccine is a type oral vaccine which is a live attenuated s typhi type 22 Uh, i mean type ty ty21a vaccine okay that is the type oral vaccine this provide this vaccines provide the short term protection so they do not provide a long term protection they are uh, important for the uh, persons who are going to the endemic areas <coughs> then we have purification of the drinking water that is most impor important then hand washing and the food hygiene are also more important this is all about the lab diagnosis of salmonella typhi